Good morning. Good morning, Rabbi Utai. Welcome to Breakfast in the Class. Breakfast in the Class today is uh, dedicated for the continued health of Khanabat Simafega for the Rufuash Shema of Eliyahu Shemom Mazal Fortune. Dedicated loving memory of Sabicha Sagman. Alava Shalom, Lunishmat Sabicha, Alea Shalom, Lunishmat Sabicha Bat Lulu for a second Askara sponsored by his son Isaac Sagman. As well, Breakfast in the Class today is dedicated in loving memory of Rinat Martha. We carry your light and kindness with us each day from Dan and Ben Martka and family, families. We miss Rabbi Fari and our Safra brothers. Also dedicated in honor of his wife, Claire Lozia, in celebration of their 10th wedding anniversary by her spouse, Judah. Mazal Tov! Dedicated for the Rufu Hashem of David Shabbat, David Ben Shoshana, who is having surgery today, Friday afternoon, October 27th. And sponsored by Stephen Rappaport. The Breakfast King, dedicated in honor of the members of our congregation for their unwavering support of Eretz Israel and Am Israel. May all of our enemies be, de- be defeated. Be'ezrat Hashem. Azaku Baruch. And our hostages returned. The week of Cobra was sponsored by David E. Ash in honor of you and your unwavering commitment to doing good for the state of Israel and for others around you during these challenging times today and every day. Um, I just want to say amazing Hazaku Baruch. Uh, I just got a phone call yesterday from a community in Manchester, Rabbi Eisenberg, from, uh, from Manchester, who they did a fundraiser for Israel and they decided to donate the proceeds of their fundraiser to, towards our tefillin campaign. Wow. So Baruch Hashem, we have another few pairs of tefillin. And as well, I'd like to shout out someone from Eretz Israel, a sofer, whose name is uh, Hall. This is a fellow who uh, could not be sponsored tefillin, but he is a sofer. And he's taking parashiot that he has from people who gave him tefillin to replace new parashiot. So he has parashiot that are kosher there. He's going to fix them up and put tefillin together for us. Three, four, five pairs. Look at Am Yisrael doing everything they can. Then again, I got another phone call from someone saying that you have Sofrim who want, they, they're going to donate the parashiot that they're writing. They're, they're donating their time for free. So they're going to donate the parashiot. So what we're going to pay for is batim. Unbelievable how Am Yisrael is coming together. Uh, for all these unbelievable things, unbelievable projects. Mika Amcha Yisrael Goyachad Ba'aretz. Fantastic. Let's begin, my friends. The Pasuk says, in the end of Parashat Lech Lecha, Hashem says to Avraham, <coughs> you know, you're quite an old fella. You know, you're uh, 100 years old. Your wife is 90 years old. But you know something? You're going to have a son. Yom Avraham el Elokim and Hashem and Avraham says to, to God, Lu Yishmael yichlef anecha. Look, I'm happy if Yishmael lives in front of you and he, and he does well. You know, I know that I'm already a hundred years old. Really, you're giving me a bracha for a son? Yom Elohim and God says, Aval. However, I'm going to bless Yishmael. However, Sarai Yishtech Yoladet Ben is going to give birth lecha to you a son. Vekaratet Shemo Yitzchak. And you're going to call him Yitzchak. What's fascinating is you look at Rashi, and Rashi says, Vikarate Shimo Yitzchak. Why is he going to be called Yitzchak, this son of Avraham? Al Shem Hatzchok. Because of the laughter. Now, that's a little bit odd, because let's talk about this for one second. When Sarah Imenu finds out about the fact that she's going to have a son, what does she do? But Titzchak Sarah Bikirba. Sarah starts to laugh. Hashem is upset and says to Abraham Avinu, Why is Sarah laughing? Does she not believe, right, that, uh, I, right, that I could give her a baby? Isn't that crazy? So you have, you have Akados Baruch Hu getting upset at Sarah Imenu's laughter. Next week's parasha. And in this week's parasha, we're finding out that he's telling him that he's going to have a son, it's going to be called Yitzchak, and what's the reason? Hashem Atzchok. Why would you name him Hashem after something that upsets you? That was not a positive thing. So I saw a magnificent answer. But before I give you the answer, I want to share with you Rashi's Yesh Omrim. Rashi gives us a second answer. Yesh Omrim, second answer, some people say, Hashem Asara Nisyonot. Because of the ten uh, challenges, the ten tests that Avraham Avinu received, Vitzadi Shana 
של שרה, the nine, the nine, the ninety years of שרה אימנו, וחט ימים שנימול, and the eight days that he was given, that he had a brit milah, וקוף שנה של אברהם. So what's the other opinion? Other opinion is, Yitzchak is an amalgam of, is an acrostic, excuse me. It stands for Rashi Tevot, Yud stands for the 10 tests, Tzadi stands for the 90 years of Sarah, Chet stands for the 8 days of his Brit Milah, and Kuf stands for the 100 years of Avraham Avinu. So Yitzchak is an amalgam of all those things. Now it sounds a little bit random, I'm not going to lie. Does that not sound a little bit random? Okay, so let's try and address and understand what exactly Rashi is telling us over here with this Hashem HaTzichok and then maybe we'll understand the Yesh Omrim in another way as well. In the Be'er Torah, he writes a fascinating insight. He says, why is it that the Avot had to wait until such an advanced age to be able to give birth to children? Why did God wait until Avraham Avinu was a hundred and Sarai Menu was 90 years old. The Gemara already addresses this question. And the Gemara says, Why were our forefathers and our foremothers, why were they barren? And the Gemara answers, Because God loves the prayers of the righteous. Now, that's a beautiful answer that God wants to hear the prayers of the righteous. And we have to figure that out as well. But you know what? HaKadosh Baruch Hu can hear the prayers of the righteous and still get them a child not at the age of a hundred years old. Why did he have to wait until such a late age? A hundred years for Abraham, 90 years for Sarai Menu. And the answer the Be'er Torah writes is unbelievable. He says that this tzchok, this laughter that Yitzchak was born into was that tzichok asali elokim. That God made for me something which is just unbelievable. And you hear about it, it's, it's crazy. In fact, we know that the nature of laughter is the unexpected. As an example, if someone says a joke and you can see the punchline coming before the guy even tells you a joke, it's not so funny. But when the guy takes you one way and then takes you the other way, and you didn't see it coming, that punchline is hilarious. So laughter in Chazal represents that which was completely unexpected. In the final day, when it's all over, what happens? The Jewish person, Am Yisrael, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, laughs. Because the unexpected of this crazy, tipsy, topsy-turvy world is revealed in a way which you can't believe. Okay? Now, my friends, I want to I wanna underline the point that I'm trying to make here. Yitzchak was, by definition, meant to be unexpected. He was meant to be impossible. Avraham Avinu was 100 years old. The mother, 90 years old. In fact, it actually goes further than that. The Pesukim tell us that it doesn't say that Sarah was barren. What does it say? Sarah en la valad. Rashi says, valad doesn't mean that she was barren. That's akar or akara. En la valad means that she was unable to have children. She did not have the tools or the vessels or the, the, uh, the, 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 inside, the inside parts that were required to be able to create a child. It was much further than anything else. And in fact, when HaKadosh Baruch Hu promised Sarai Menu that she'd be able to have a child, suddenly, Pirsan Nida, it says. She suddenly had her period for the first time. She couldn't understand what was going on. And we'll see a little bit more about that next week, that the food that she's preparing, suddenly uh, it became Tameh. My friends, I want you to understand this. Why did it have to be in such a weird way? Why did it have to be at such a late age? Why did it need to be so impossible? And the answer is that from Am Yisrael's inception, we needed to become a people 
that were by its own definition, by its very existence, a people that were impossible. A people that when you see what they do, what they accomplish, it's laughable. It doesn't make sense. Nothing about the Jew is supposed to make sense. We're not supposed to survive the things that we survive. We're not supposed to succeed in the areas in which we've succeeded. We're not supposed to bring change to the world and Nobel Prizes and affect and control so many different beautiful things in this world to produce and to make it more beautiful. We're not supposed to do any of that. But the question is, why? Why did we need to be impossible? What was the point of Am Yisrael being so miraculous, so much of a, of a source of laughter, that Yitzchak Avinu's very name needs to be Yitzchak? Understanding that, you start to realize that the names of the Avot already give you a hint at this concept. Avraham is Av Hamon Goim. He's a father to many nations. How is Avraham Avinu a father to many nations? How? Because his children produce the biggest nations in the world? It's not true. We have very few people. However, the Gemara tells us something unbelievable. If you teach the son of your friend Torah, the Torah considers it as if you birthed that person. Avram was the disseminator of morality, of monotheism. He taught that to the world. So he became Avamon Goim. In order for the Jewish people to be the light unto the nations, for people to be able to see us and take note, what was required? Avraham, what do you need? Yitzchak, Yaakov. The Jewish people needed to be an impossibility. They needed to be someone that was stepped on, that got trod on no matter where they went. So that when they achieved, and that when they accomplished, so that when they succeeded, and when they built wealth, and when they became important people in the countries they went to, there would be no one who would attribute their success to that person. Everyone would be able to understand that there must be something about this nation which is touched by the divine. So therefore, in order for them to be Avamon Goyim, what was required, it needed to be laughable. How downtrodden they were, how small, how beaten, how persecuted, how everything stacked against them would still result in unbelievable success. My friends, so the nature of Yitzchak is something that defies nature. So the nature of Yaakov is to be someone that gets stepped on. And from that place to become from a Yaakov, a Yisrael, a fighter, a, a struggler, a struggler to become someone that rises and initially sits on the ground, but ultimately fights with the greatest forces in the world. Kisarita melokim va'adam. My friends, I want to give you the other side of Yitzchak. The other element of the unexpected. The other element of laughing. You see, even though Sarai Menu laughs at Yitzchak's possibility, that does not deter Yitzchak Avinu from coming. Yitzchak's midah, his midah, is called the midah of givura, of strength. And the Sifre Musa write that a Jewish person, all of us, are categorized by a few different things. Am Yisrael is Rachmanim, Baishanim, we are merciful, we are Baishanim, we are embarrassed, we're not arrogant, and Gomle Chasadim, and we do acts of kindness with people. So those are the three character traits that are called Simane Yisrael. They're called the signs of a Jew. That they are, one more time, they are merciful, Rachmanim, Baishanim, that they have a sense of sensitivity and embarrassment. They like to hide, they don't like to brag and be arrogant. And finally, Gomle Chasadim, that they do acts of kindness. My friends, I want you to understand something. The Sifre Musa write something unbelievable. What do they tell us? They tell us, Haron, bring it here. I'll do it at the end. The Sifre Musa bring something unbelievable. How, how do they explain? That what does it mean to have Busha, a person should be embarrassed. Said this Afre Musar, there's a right time and a wrong time to have Busha. Because the Jewish people are both Baishanim, but also 
עזי פנים. Now we say in our תחנון, אין אנחנו עזי פנים. לא מה לפניך. We are not עזי פנים, we are not brazen to say before you that we have not sinned. But my friends, we do have to have what's called in the sefer, in the, uh, in the sefarim, עזות de kedusha, A brazenness of holiness. And let's explain. On one side, we have a pasuk that tells us, a, a teaching that tells us, az panim legehinam. A person who has a brazen face, he's arrogant, gehinam. On the other hand, we have a, a mishnah mefureshet that says, a person is supposed to be kal kanesher, gibor katsvi, right? Ratz katsvi, right? Ratz katsvi, gibor kari, right? The az kanamer. So you're supposed to have the azut, the brazenness of namer of a leopard. So is it a good thing to have or a bad thing to have? Do we follow Yehuda ben Tema that tells us that a person is supposed to have azut or do we follow azpanim legeinam? And the rabbis explain that a Jew needs to understand that there are times to be bashful and there are times to have great courage and great chutzpah. My friends, the chutzpah of Yitzchak, say the Sefer Musar, is that when you know what it, is that, what it is that is right to do, you do that which is right, mipnei hamal'aygim lefanav, from those that laugh at you. Interestingly enough, Yitzchak Avinu is a character who always does the right thing. And a guy like that, that goody two shoes, the kid that gets made fun of in school for being a goody goody, the one that gets told all the time, live a little, come on, it's ridiculous. That person, Yitzchak, needed to have within him a tool, a vessel to be able to repel that ridicule. In fact, even before he was born, it wasn't only Sarah and Avraham Avinu that were laughing. The Pasuk, the Midrash tells us that when Yitzchak Avinu was born, they made a great party and everyone came on that day, and it tells us that Sarah was nursing Yitzchak Avinu. And the rabbis tell us, why is that a relevant point? Why do we need to understand this? The Chachamim explained to us, because the Letzane Ador, the, the jokers of the generation were saying, this baby is not Avraham's. Avraham's 100 years old. This baby is really Avimelech's. Because when Sarah was kidnapped, right, Avimelech took her, so maybe Avimelech was with Sarah, and this is the baby of Avimelech. I always loved that. Like, oh, how can Abraham have a child? He's 100 years old. Sarah is 90. If you're willing to have suspended this belief that she got pregnant, you can't understand that he was the one that made her pregnant. The answer is, from the beginning, Yitzchak is surrounded by laughter. I remember as a child, there was a, a, tape, a, a tape back in the day called Country Yassi. Country Yassi used to shamelessly rip off all the country songs on the radio change a couple words here and there and make it Jewish. And then he would release these tapes in the Jewish stores. Now there was a song that I remember growing up and the name of the song was Zlata. This one boy who has this name Zlata and every time they say the name on the tape you hear a laughing track behind everyone's laughing. And the kid goes to school and everyone laughs at his name. And his father run, leaves him when he's a young kid and he gives him this name, this ridiculous name. Everyone always laughs at him. He learns to fight every kid. He fights every kid in his class. You know, until finally one day he's in a pizza shop somewhere in Monticello. <laughs> I'm sure in the original story it wasn't that. But he meets this guy. Who walks in? His father walks in. Anyway, he, gets a, he jumps up his father. Why'd you name me this name Zlata? They have a bust up, a brawl. They fight in the pizza shop. Until finally, they're lying on the floor next to each other. And he says, why, after everything, you walked out on me, you left me alone, and you gave me this name. And the father says, I knew that I was going to have to leave you. I knew I was going to have to leave you behind. I knew there was going to be no one to make you tough. I knew that if I give you a name called Zlata, every kid in school would come for you. And you'd learn how to protect yourself. And once you learned how to protect yourself, I knew you'd be okay even without me. That was a story, the song from my childhood. Now, while I do not re recommend naming your child a ridiculous name that's going to get them wedgies in school, 
even with the best of intentions, okay? However, the theme of Zlata perhaps is in some way the story of Yitzchak Avinu. That from his birth, he's called Tzchok. From his birth, before he's even born, people are laughing at him. In order to create a reality of a person that is not moved one inch by other people's opinions. It doesn't bother him that someone else thinks he's ridiculous or too religious or too obsessed or a fool for giving his money to charity. Oh, they got you. Oh, they got, they got, ha ha, they got you over there. They got you at the drive in the synagogue. They got you. Yeah, they hit you up. These lines that people say, they make fun of a person. And sometimes a person can allow themselves to be deterred. When you know what's right, nothing should stop you from doing what you need to do. You want to wear a kippah? Wear a kippah. You want to put up a mezuzah? Put up a mezuzah. My friends, a person should never be embarrassed of who they are. So you want to be av hamon goyim? You need to be ready to have the people laugh in your face. You need to have people tell you, you're ridiculous. What's the problem with eat? It's only salad. It's only sushi. Does it matter that it's in a non-kosher restaurant? It's only sushi. Stop being ridiculous. I remember, oh, now you're so kosher. I remember where we went two years ago. You remember that? Should we go back there? Maybe I should tell you rabbi friends about how we went and what we ate in uh, Ibiza. A person suddenly is attacked for the things that they've done, the things that they've taken on. Sometimes that causes them to waver. But remember that you have inside of you the power of Yitzchak. That you're bulletproof. And that all the opinions and all the noise ultimately... You know, in the beginning of next week's parasha, we'll read that Sarah Imenu says, this son, Yishishmael, he's shooting arrows at, ya- at Yitzchak Avinu. How apropos is it that when we're hearing to this morning that rockets landed in Tel Aviv, that Yishmael is still throwing arrows at Yitzchak. But what's the end of the story? Gareshet ben ha'amahazot. Let them get chased away, this son of the handmaiden. Let them get chased away. Garesh et ben ha'amazot. And I have an even deeper prayer to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. Not just that they get chased away. Yistaleku oivenu v'saneinu v'chum v'akshiratenu. But rather, yitamu oivenu. That our enemies should end. There's two ways that an enemy ends. One way that an enemy ends is when they're destroyed. But there's another way that an enemy ends. And that is when the enemy becomes your friend. The Torah tells us that at the end of Yishmael's life, what happens? He does complete teshuvah. Did you know that? We learn this from the fact that when it says that Yishmael passed away, it says about his life, he lived for 100 years and 30 years and 7 years. And actually, what does it say? That That's only used by Sadiqim. Not only that, we find that at the funeral of their father, Yishmael tells Yitzchak to go first, you go first. We see the Ishmael did complete teshuvah. My friends, there are 1.8 billion people out there who serve the true God. They serve our Ribbono Shel Olam. You should understand this. This is part of their power. The Maharil Diskin, if he saw an Arab praying, he would not walk in front of them while they were praying. Like the halakha of walking in front of someone who's praying Amidah. Did you know that? Where do you think their enduring power comes from? We have 1.8 billion people who already believe in God. Could you imagine what would happen if Yishmael, instead of being destroyed, would do Teshuvah? Could you imagine if overnight this world would be litaken olam emachut shaddai in one second? You'd have a third of the world on the same page, fighting for the same cause. It's unbelievable. Inshallah, we should be zocher to be able to see Uval Sion Goel. Hashem, we should be zocher to see the end of that story where what started off as an improbable child, Yitzchak Avinu, winds up with all of us sitting around 
having literally the last laugh. But Tishak Liyom Aharon. Baruch Adonai Le'olam.